Hey guys, Job is 34 back again. This is my official Star Wars 1 6 holiday special. That's right, and I guarantee you my holiday special is going to be better than the legendary real one that's uh, the Star Wars holiday special of uh, the 70s ever is going to be. Um, and yes, I admittedly have a copy of that because I am a sucker of all things Star Wars, and even though that's probably the worst uh, thing ever made. Uh, in Star Wars history, and even George Lucas doesn't want to take credit or even acknowledge it, <laughs> um, I still like it because it's part of the history. Um, but, you know, seeing people like B. Arthur dancing with Greedo, or, you know, Art Carney from the Honeymooners, you know, Norton, uh, annoying a Death Star or Imperial officer uh, is something that you won't forget anytime soon. Uh, if you are to experience it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to show a bunch of Star Wars stuff. I, I haven't reviewed a lot of ones I've been getting over the year because I haven't really done a lot of videos as of late. Uh, and I wanted to save this one in honor of Rogue One coming out, uh, which I did see uh, on opening night, which I thought was awesome. Now, I'm going to give a quick review of that too, so we'll, we'll make this kind of a dual-purpose video. And since Darth Vader... Um, uh, is uh, a character that always shines, no matter how much or how little he may appear in a Star Wars movie. Um, I started, I wanted him to be the focal point to start this vid. Um, you can see here, I'm all Star Wars up. I have my Star Wars coffee mug here. I've had these for a while now, actually, which are kind of cool. See, they have, there's Vader, woohoo! <laughs> and uh, I, have, I have a couple sets. One has Boba Fett on it and Han Solo, and the other has Luke and uh, Darth Vader. But as you can see here, what you're looking at, and a, a while back, if you guys remember, I did a couple older Star Wars uh, reviews of the older Vaders where I had a custom one. I still have that one um, that was done by Hurricane, who was a very well-known customizer of Vaders back in the day before we had uh, more options as far as official releases. And then Medicom, you know, did theirs. And I never really owned a Medicom one because they were too small or too short from what I remember and they weren't in scale with the rest of the 12-inch figures made by Sideshow at the time, and now, of course, also Hot Toys. And uh, then I had the, uh, if you remember from that last review I was talking about, I, I compared the Hurricane one to Sideshow's first attempt, actually, no, I'm sorry, second attempt at their Darth Vader for Empire Strikes Back, uh, Empire, Empire Strikes Back slash Return of the Jedi. And... It was a deluxe set that came with the uh, the unmasked head and, and light up face and all that cool stuff. Uh, I still have that figure, but of course I could not help myself. I also ventured out, and because I had some extra cash and reward points and everything else, I did go ahead and double dip uh, because I am a sucker for all things Darth Vader, especially. And I got the revised, uh, improved version, and improved it is. So this is technically sideshows. It's the one on the right that you're looking at right now. See if I could zoom into that one to show you which one I'm referring to at the moment. This guy here. Okay. And he is also 
the you know it's still the Empire Return of the Jedi look. So as you could see, he wears his robe on inside the armor and not over like in A New Hope. And just like the one before it, the chest plate and the belt do light up, just like the original release. You know, he comes with his lightsaber, both uh, lit and unlit. Now, it doesn't glow with the lightsaber. The Hot Toys does come with one that lights up. So we'll get into the, you know, the pros and cons of each Vader in, in a bit. But uh, where they vastly improved this one is basically in the outfit. The uniform is much better. The posing, as you see here, they give you the infamous uh, holding the belt grip, as you see him in that pose right now. And the stand is kind of ordinary and plain now with the newer ones they're doing. They're just kind of giving you like a black, ordinary, like it doesn't even say Star Wars. I think it's a Star Wars on the bottom for some reason, which is kind of weird. But it's just like this normal, like octagon looking stand. But it's all right. It's simple but effective. And, you know, because it's the Return of the Jedi Empire Strike version, you know, his helmet's a little more streamlined, a little glossier, a little shinier, uh, a little more narrow, whereas A New Hope, you know, he had a bigger dome, more matte or, you know, flat black finish, not as glossy or nice looking, uh, at least not in all part, in some parts. So lens is more of the darker black shade, you know, not red t tinted, and uh, Hot Toys did kind of go the red tint route, although in this lighting you can't really tell, but they did, it is there. So, overall, the, where they improve this figure is, like I said, they give you more options for posing with the hands. The inner jumpsuit, okay, you can see that he's wearing under, you know, you know his basic one-piece jumpsuit that he's wearing underneath all the equipment and, and capes and stuff is vast improved over the deluxe version. Now, if you have the deluxe version and you're not a super-duper Dark Vader fan, I would say... You know, this could technically be a pass if you're happy with the original, the, the second version of this. And I keep saying second because they did come out with a, a sideshow did come out with a Darth Vader several years ago that was popular for a while, and then the deluxe version was their second one, and now this is their third one. All basically themed towards the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi look. Um, so again, the armor and the helmet and everything is geared towards that movie. I will say though, if like I said, if you're not a Star Wars freak like me or the Dark Vader freak where you like the character you just kind of want one representation of him if you have the first one the first one of this one the first attempt at this version the deluxe version with the Anakin head and all the other good stuff and you're happy with that um, I say the second you know buying this one the second version uh, you know it's still to me uh, justified I think the improvements and the, the stature of the figure everything just looks better to me but it's, it's minor. I'm not going to, you know, try to oversell this. Um, you could easily pass on this one and just keep your Deluxe. Or, if you want to sell the Deluxe and just get this one that's a little more simpler. Because, you know, you can't. I don't have it on right now, but it does still have the light-up chest box and belt. It does come with, like I said, lightsaber, like the lightsaber lit and unlit like the, the, the Deluxe did. It basically is the same figure. It's got the same height, too. It's still kind of um, oversized. Although, for some reason to me... I don't know what it is about this one. Maybe it's the difference in the stand or, you know, because the other one did come with that huge light-up base that maybe looked maybe made him look even taller or, or bigger. But this one seems a little more proportioned to me. It doesn't seem as out of place as the, the, the deluxe one for some reason to me. But I think people still complain that he's too tall. Now, whereas Hot Toys, he looks just as tall right now, but as you can see, he's on a much thicker base. And the Hot Toys version, I think, is better scaled. Uh, it's not quite as tall. I, I want to say technically... This one comes in, I think usually it's like almost 14 inches or so, where the Hot Toys one comes in at a lower, like, I think 13.1 or 13.2 scale, I want to say. So, you know, I, I, I may have the numbers not exactly right, but I know that the Hot Toys one is a little shorter. Um, so it's a little more in scale with the rest of the 1-6 world versus the Sideshow ones that are usually oversized a bit. And that goes for all the versions Sideshow has done. They've all looked a little taller than they should. Um, but, again, overall, I'm, I'm very um, happy with this version. I think that, you know, that's there's no mistaking who this is. It's Darth Vader. And you know what? He's large and in charge. I, I never really, it never really bothered me as much as some other people about the height. 
I don't care about swapping out the body. I don't care about trying to make them shorter. You know, I'm okay with it, personally. And I will say that the other option you could do is if you don't want to double dip and buy another Vader, you might be able to pick up parts of this Vader to improve the deluxe Vader, like mainly the bodysuit and maybe the extra hand pieces like these grip hands or stuff or other poses that maybe didn't come with the deluxe version to kind of make one super duper, you know, Empire Strikes Back slash Return of Jedi Vader for yourself. And then you have the best of both worlds. I personally don't mind. I, there's never enough Vader for me. I love having all the Vaders um, because... I want to be able to have them in different poses. Like, I'm going to leave this one in this pose and maybe have the Deluxe Vader either with the helmet off and showing the Anakin face or maybe having him kneel, you know, or have that one with the, uh, you know, holding his lightsaber differently. You know, whatever. Whatever the case may be. And this one, ultimately, I'm going to have him displayed with the lightsaber because the lightsaber does come with a light-up option. Now, as you can see, the Hot Toys Vader here is looking a little plain vanilla at the moment. I haven't really gone a lot. I've, I've had this figure for a while. But I didn't put the batteries in him yet, so he doesn't do anything yet. I mean, I know there's a remote control. He breathes. He talks. His belt lights up. Which And the odd thing is that for Hot Toys, since they went A New Hope, I don't know if A New Hope, the chest plate didn't light up or maybe it was different. But for some reason, they don't make the chest plate light up. Only the belt with theirs. Whereas Sideshow, both the, the chest piece and the belt light up. I don't know why. I don't know why Hot Toys made a decision. Now, I will say that... The flaw in the a New Hope Vader that I've noticed, I mean, the, the costume looks great. Okay, the helmet is spot on. Okay, I love the helmet. I think they got the portion and the look of it right. And not in so much in this lighting you can see right now, but it does have that subtle red-orangey tint in the lens like the New Hope. You know, the, the armor is right, and the robes are on the outside of the armor, which is accurate. Okay, the boots and the stand is great. Where I think this figure falls a little bit um, is the, 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 the belt, the waist belt looks a little funky. I don't know, like this, and I, I've heard other people complain about this. I fussed with it and made it look a little better, but there is something up with this belt. I don't know, like, it just looks a little, like, loose or baggy or something, you know, not as streamlined, whereas you look at this one, this one fits better, the, the, uh, the crotch piece looks better. And this one's a little different. I mean, again, it's it's supposed to be more accurate to A New Hope, and the costume is different, so I, I can forgive that. Um, they did get little details right. Let me see if I can get really close in here without jittering things too much. But they did go as far as make the uh, the two bolts at the end of his mouthpiece there, where the one is the silver and the one is kind of like a damaged or like darker. Whereas with the uh, the, the Empire Strikes Back version, as you can see, they're both shiny and, and, and even in the, the mouth mouthpiece there at the bottom, on one on left and right, the little bolts there. So they got a lot of details right here. And when you look at them together, standing side by side, you know, other than the fact that they were made by two different companies, you could clearly see the difference. You can, clear, you can clearly tell which one's A New Hope, which one is Empire Strikes Back or Return of Jedi, you know, and I think they both do a great job representing what they do. Um, so again, since I have this one and the uh, deluxe one, I'm going to have fun with these Vaders and having them different ways. Now, again, because I'm a junkie, I'm a Darth Vader Star Wars junkie, I am going to also be getting the Rogue One Vader. And unfortunately, it's not here yet. It's not out yet for the U.S. Um, I've seen pictures of it. And to be honest with you, there's been controversy about the clothing, I guess, because the, the Rogue One Vader has kind of a hybrid look of this, of New Hope and the Sideshow one. And the robes are underneath the armor. I did see Rogue One, and you know I can't clearly tell. Some people said that he looks both ways throughout, you know, throughout the scenes that he was in the movie. Others say that he looked like more like the Empire way, and and they kind of like had a little bit of uh, their own hybrid, uh, you know, artistic vision for him in that film. But I could say that regardless of the cape and the robe, because that could easily be fixed if you want to switch it or do it the other way. The figure itself looks like the best Vader yet, personally, from my, what I can see from pictures. It looks awesome, and it looks like it's going to be the best of both worlds. So what I'm going to do is when I get that Vader, I'm going, to do, I'm, going to do another, I'm going to do a review of it, and I'm going to do another comparison where I'll have these two with him so we can kind of see them all together. And I definitely think that some of the shortcomings of the New Hope Vader that people complained about looks like it's been corrected for the Rogue One Vader. The belt looks a little nicer and a little more to size. Um, the other little issue is that some people complain that his legs are a little short, and I don't know if that's because his head's bigger, so it gives the illusion, but I do feel that the legs are slightly short for his body, 
But again, not, not a big deal. Um, and also, people have complained about his wrist guards there, his, his gloves, that they're like two pieces instead of one. And some people have complained about that, whereas the Rogue One Vader, it looks like they changed that or fixed that. So I think we're going to get a, a superior Vader as far as all around and to represent Rogue One. And I think it'll be fun to compare the three of these together. Maybe even four. I'll get the Deluxe Vader and we'll just do a huge Darth Vader video and just see them all in one shot. Um, but, you know, other than that, these are great figures, great representation. And what I'm going to do is when I, when I do the Rogue One review, I will have a New Hope Vader here on the left all batteried up and ready. So we'll see, like, his breathing feature, the light feature, and we'll have everything going. So this way we could really do a fair comparison of, like, what features each figure has and, you know, the pros and cons. But for right now, I do applaud Sideshow for another minor thing. Sideshow, I, I know that the general consensus is that they don't make products as quite as good as Hot Toys or the quality, although they've, you know, obviously gotten better. But what I do like about Sideshow that's different from the Hot Toys one is that Sideshow put the batteries in ahead of time. So you can, you know, you don't have to struggle putting batteries in or, or, or screwing up the figure. Where I've heard some people complain, and the reason why I haven't done it yet is that when you're trying to put all the batteries and the stuff in this figure... Uh, it's a, it's a pain and it's a lot of work to get all the batteries. In. I mean, I saw the amount of batteries. And I'm like, my God. And you know, you have to take this, you have to take the cape off, you take the, the, the robe off, you got to get to the back of the suit. And it's a lot of work to put all these batteries in to possibly have features that you may rarely use. And you also have to put the batteries in his arm that holds the light up lightsaber. Um, which I'm not as, I don't have a problem with that as much, but it's kind of inconsistent because when I got Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke, uh, from Hot Toys, the, they also come with light-up sabers, which I'll show them in a bit. And their batteries came already installed. So I'm not sure why, you know, the Vader didn't. But in any case, I'll be back to show some more figures as this holiday special continues in one sec. Okay, I'm back, and I wanted to add some more th figures to the, uh, the mix here. As you can see here, I recently acquired, uh, through some discounts and coupons and reward points from Sideshow, I did uh, binge and get some more uh, Sideshow Star Wars figures that I add to my collection, uh, and that is the Jawa set, which surprisingly, they're a lot taller. You know, I didn't realize how off the Hasbro ones were in scale, and even the Metacom ones that I have. And I've reviewed those in other vids, because I do have them. But these are, uh, I mean, I have, you know, I have them crunched down and posed a little bit, but they're, they're, they're quite tall, you know, for Jawas. And I guess, I guess that's the correct, you know, way that, you know, I guess these are more true in scale. But, um, you know, we have R5-D4, which we all know was the rejected droid that Luke almost took. And he malfunctioned, which, by the way, I mean, can you see if I can get that to go here? There, you can push, let me see here. Take him out of the mix for a second. Show you close up. There's the. Uh, he's got some good weathering. Comes with an antenna. Uh, they give you two antennas. One is a spare, I guess, in case one breaks. It does have the middle leg that comes down if you want to have the third leg. Restraining bolt. They give you a couple of those. And these, you know, these flaps and stuff do open. I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, this figure's been around. It's not brand new. Get that one open there. There you go. Um, really cool. And then in the middle here, I believe it's the middle one that you can uh, press and he will go into malfunction mode. There we go. Jeez. Okay, so what happens is you pull the middle one out and then this pops up. Okay, and this is like him when he malfunctioned, basically. Okay. So, you can push it right back down here. And it snaps back in, you close it, and then he's back to normal. So, Pretty cool. It's R5-D4, and let me zoom in a little bit here. And then we have the Jawas. As you can see, they have light-up eyes, and you can arrange the hood multiple ways, and I chose to do one of each. And the lighting here, you can kind of see the head sculpt in, in, you know, underneath the hood, and it's just basically a black nothing. It's no face or anything with the two eyes. The glow feature works very nice, the light-up feature. You know, you just basically take the hood off and the switch is on the back. And again, because it's Sideshow, it does come with the batteries already in there which I like, unlike Hot Toys, <laughs> where you have to put the batteries in. But uh, the, the, real, the real, I think, plus and the, the, the winner of these figures, you know, they're Jawas. There's not much you could do, but, the, you know, the cloth and everything is nice. It's a little weathered on the bottom. I might weather it up a little further. I don't know, maybe give them a little more sandy look. But 
The uh, bandolier is kind of like the same quality as the one that the Tuscan Raiders came with. Uh, are really nice. They have that real, you know, leather look to it. They have some, like, controllers and stuff that, you know, they can hold. He's holding the gun, okay. He's got a slightly different outfit. It's hard to tell, but you can, it almost looks like a vest that he's wearing over the hood, too, you see. And it blends in, so from far away, it just looks like he's wearing just a plain hoodie like the other guy. But no, he's wearing some sort of vest, so he's a little different. And based on the pictures, I, I basically adjusted the hood accordingly to each one. So, really nice set. Back out again. And also, really quick, so you see in between my break, I did turn the lights on for the Empire Strikes Back Vader. So, like, as you can see as the Deluxe, it does blink and flicker. And he's covering up a bit with his belt, but you can see the green lights glowing and illuminating on his belt there. Getting a little closer there, so that's kind of cool. So, again, Sideshow has some, you know, these figures come with cool light-up features and everything else. Um, so, not much more going on there, but these are cool compliments, I call it. You know, compliments to your collection. They're not, a, they're not mandatory, but... I made a conscious decision, other than Vader, Vader's the only thing I, I'm breaking my promise with, to uh, stick with basically like original Star Wars stuff um, from A New Hope. So that's basically where my Hot Toys collection has come to. I made some exceptions, and I'll show you a little bit of what I bought in addition to that, but um, especially with Vader. Vader, all bets are off. I like Vader no matter what movie he's from. <laughs> but, you know, these guys are from A New Hope, and they do, they are part of the original classic, so I did want them as part of my collection. I think they look really, 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 really cool. Okay, so I will be back to show you more stuff in one second. Okay, back with yet some more uh, Star Wars members here. So now what we have here is a mix more of uh, Sideshow and Hot Toys. As you can tell, both companies have been very busy this past year. And like I said, I've taken my time and pick and choose which ones I want. Now, Boba Fett, I did lie earlier when I said I'm a, I, I break the rules for Darth Vader. I did forget about the fact that I also break the rules sometimes with uh, Boba Fett. Uh, now, we all know in order to have Boba Fett, you can't just be collecting a new hope unless you go by the special edition when they added them in there. But for our purist fans, we all know that originally Boba Fett did not appear in the original Star Wars. And actually, ironically, he was introduced in a cartoon form in the holiday special. So it's very fitting that I have him and show him here. Now, I do have an Empire version that was done by Sideshow that I did a hybrid. And I, I showed pics and I did a video of that showing that I kind of took some parts of Metacom and Sideshow and kind of morphed it and made my own Empire Strike. And I also did a Return of the Jedi version like that, too, for Boba Fett that I ended up selling to a friend of mine who wanted it. So... Um, I did end up getting the Hot Toys version. This is the deluxe version that comes with the Solid Pit base uh, that I'm not using at the moment. It's still in the package, but it is the deluxe version. The base is cool, but I think I come to realize that it was probably unnecessary uh, because you do spend more money for it, but the Solid Pit, the whole thing is kind of like not screen accurate. I mean, it's not in scale and it's kind of, it's cool, but not necessary. So I'll probably pose it, or maybe I'll get another cheap knockoff Return of Jedi Boba Fett at some point to just pose with that or something in addition. But in any case, this Hot Toys one here is done really well. Um, there's always going to be critiques and complaints about the green or the paint job or did they get it absolutely right. Some people said it's not weathered enough. I think uh, for what it is, I think Hot Toys did a great job here. There's always room for improvement and maybe they'll, you know, come out with an Empire version at some point. But it is a little more battle damage. It is a little darker green. Uh, than the Empire version. Now, I do, I, I do not have the re-released Empire one yet. And I don't know if I'm getting that one, because I like my Metacom Sideshow mix. But I did hear that they made improvements with that one to kind of rival this a bit. What I did notice here is that Hot Toys seems to have gone with the same type of helmet or scale of the Sideshow one. Because, you know, obviously they work together on some things, maybe. I don't know. But the I do have an issue with the helmet a bit, because the helmet should be a little wider, and, you know, not as not as bulky as, as this is. This looks more like the Sideshow helmet. So, not sure about the helmet. I think the helmet could be a little improved and, like, widen a bit. It kind of has to flare out a little bit more on the bottom, like the Metacom one did. So, other than that, it's a well-done figure. I mean, it comes with all your basic stuff. It has the uh, opposable cape. 
it does have the the red colored uh wrist guards on you know armor so that that matches return to the jedi it does have your darker green with the yellow and damaged armor there as you can see battle damage armor pieces there scuffs and scratches or whatever else you know have you same thing for the advisor it does have your scuffs and your battle wounds and all that good stuff the little uh dent that he always has in his helmet there is there the markings on the side match up the jet pack there is the multicolored blue and yellow and red you know jet pack that matches return of the jedi versus the green one he wore in empire and the base is nice and kind of collaborates with all the bases of the Hot Toys. As I show you a few more Hot Toys, you'll see that they all come with these similar type of bases. Um, I do have uh, the Hot Toys Stormtrooper 2-pack uh, from the original that also come with those bases. I do not have them unpacked right now. I did take them out to inspect them. They're still in the box. I haven't taken them out to explain it, so I won't be showing them in this vid. But I'll show them in a future vid. Um, moving on, the Luke Skywalker X-Wing Red 5 pilot outfit. Now, this figure I got on a very good deal, which is why I ended up buying it. I wasn't originally going to buy it, but I do think he looks fantastic with the helmet on. But you take the helmet off, and it's no good. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's okay. It's, it, it has a likeness to Mark Hamill. I mean, it does look like Luke. But the, the paintwork and stuff on this one is not so good um, compared to, like, Hot Toys quality. However... The magic happens when you put the helmet on, and it transforms the figure and kind of takes on a whole new thing once he's wearing the helmet. And that's really where the figure shines, and that's really kind of why I decided to have the figure, because I do feel that it looks better, like it looks great with the helmet on and the visor down. So it's kind of like, it's, a weird, it's weird, because I feel like, you know, how, how do you hate a figure? Let me zoom in here a little bit. How do you hate a figure and not like the figure? At, you know, how do you hate a figure and love the figure at the same time? Well, helmet on, I love the figure. Helmet off, not so much. But the outfit, the gloves, the details, uh, the cool stand, to come, you know, typical octagon stand, again, like they're going with, like the Sideshow Vader back there, like I told, said earlier. Except this one has, like, a gray cement floor finish, kind of, I guess, when he's on Yavin, or I don't know, I guess that's supposed to, you know, represent that. The, uh, the gear is all nice and definitely a step up from the older Hasbro versions and everything that came before. It's got the little control panels on the, on the wrist there. So the vest is nice in scale. Similar to costume to like Bosk, you know, except it's orange instead of yellow, but it's the same. You know, I didn't realize I started really looking at the Bosk figure that it really is an X-Wing pilot outfit just with yellow instead of, <laughs> uh, instead of orange, but it's a similar type of costume. And he's got some, see, he's got some bullets and ammo there in his belt. So it's really, it's really nice. I mean, it, the details are there. The head scope is okay. But, again, it, it lacks. It lacks a bit um, when, the, when the helmet's off. The hair piece, ironically, and I'm going to show you something. Hold on one second. This is kind of interesting. Now, this is the, I'm going to show you this first. This is the, the Hot Toys Empire Strikes Back Bespin Luke with the purrs and all that, and, you know, obviously this came out several years ago, it, obviously it's with the, the hair off, and it came with two different types of hair pieces, if you remember. This hair is the hair piece that you could put on this Luke's head when the helmet's off, okay, if you want him with the full-blown hairdo. The weird thing is, is that these two actually, it actually fits on this, and when you put the two together, it actually doesn't look too bad. So it's the Hot Toys, there, it's the Hot Toys Luke head sculpt with the sideshow hairpiece of the X-Wing, and together it kind of looks cool, looks good. So, I don't know, I might use this for a custom Luke for something, you know, maybe I'll make another, maybe uh, put him in the Stormtrooper outfit, or, I don't know, make another variation of him, because it, it kind of looks more like a New Hope Luke because of the hairstyle, but it's got the Empire Strikes Back Luke head sculpt, but, you know, it's the face, I should say, but... It kind of works together. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So, I don't know. I might do something with that. And I figured I'd show you guys because that's kind of interesting. So, obviously, you have to match the hair up. But there it is right there. And, again, it's just weird how the two can marry together. Yeah. Interesting. So, I thought that was a little interesting 
tidbit there. So if you guys are looking to make a custom Luke or maybe use your extra pieces and put something together, you can. The Sideshow and the Hot Toys stuff can, you know, sometimes work together. So there's your Hot Toys Boba Fett Return of the Jedi. Very well done. And the Sideshow X-Wing Luke. And I would say, again, to me, Boba Fett's mandatory. Uh, Luke, X-Wing Luke, is a bonus. It's not mandatory. Just like the R5-D4 or the Jawas, I feel that, you know, if you're going for that particular collection of that, or that movie, you know, it's a cool figure to have to complement, but it's not necessary, you know. And I got a, I got a, a lot of money off on it, on a deal, so I went with it. And, again, because if you get this figure, I recommend just keep the helmet on. I'm not even taking the helmet off to show you the head sculpt. You could see pictures. You could see other people. I just think, you know, this figure works what it's intended to be, and that's him in the outfit with the helmet on. And if you can get a deal on it and you can display it this way, then you're off and running and you're good to go. All right, I'll be back. Okay, back again with some more. And as you can see, we got some light-up action again. And here's another example of me breaking my rule. I did like Kylo Ren from The Force Awakens, and I did end up breaking down and getting that figure. He's a cool addition to the Star Wars universe. I do like his story. I do like that he's Ben Solo, and I do like that he is struggling with staying on the dark side and being for you know being pulled to the good side, which is the exact reverse of what happened to Vader. Um, and he's very unsure, and he's conflicted, as he says, and all this other good stuff. And I, I'm just curious to see where this character goes. Uh, this is not, you know, this, this this helmet does not come off. It is a simple figure that came out right away. Who knows, maybe before, maybe Hot Toys was instructed to create this before they even knew who was under the mask or how he was going to look. So I'm sure there's going to be a deluxe version or another version where the head sculpt's there. There's some custom ones out there, but... To be honest with you, as far as from a cool factor goes, I don't care. I like him with the helmet on, and I like the mystery of him wearing the helmet versus seeing... Although, I do think the actor did a great job when he was unmasked as well, and I'm fine with that too. Um, and, it, and it is unique in a way where Vader pretty much stayed the hel you know, with the helmet on the whole time, other than a few quick glimpses in Empire, and you never really knew. Where this character is like, he's not really a Sith, he's not really, you know... He's kind of his own thing. He's trying to be like a, he's like a Vader wannabe. He's not sure. He's almost like a spoiled kid that doesn't know what he wants, you know. And I, th I think it's an interesting character. And, of course, we all know, and, you know, I, I don't think at this point it's much of a spoiler if you haven't seen it yet. But we all know that he takes part in the demise of Han Solo. So it's going to be interesting to see how he develops there. Now, maybe you can't see it that good in, the, in this light, but as you can see, the lightsaber does light up. I think it's more brighter by the hilt there. You can kind of see there it's lit up so you know it's stronger there but it, it the lightsaber kind of fades see it's stronger by the hilt and then kind of fades as it gets further down so but it's cool um you know it's a light up gimmick it works same thing with luke here this is the hot toys luke skywalker figure from a new hope farm boy luke to be exact and this um this figure is pretty cool although i think you know the head sculpt is a little off to be farm boy Luke. Um, it's good, but something about the hair. Now, getting back to what I was saying before, if you were to take the Empire Luke from Hot Toys and put the hair on it from the X-Wing, I don't know. Would it look better with that instead? These questions and more. You know? Let's get in a little closer here and see. What do you think, guys? But anyway, it is a cool figure. Uh, like I said, and like, unlike this Dark Vader back there from Hot Toys, they did put the batteries in the arm. You have to switch the arm out to get the light-up saber feature. But, you know, they did they did the work for it. And this this blue blade is kind of noticeable. I think it's kind of the angle of, of Dark, I mean, sorry, Kylo Ren here. Because in the dark, like I said, the red does kind of shine more. You know, it's a little hard to tell from that angle, but... Put a little closer to the camera, get some details on his helmet there, see? And he's going to finish what Darth Vader started. <laughs> and the hood does come off so that you can see more of the helmet there, see? So you can take the hood off, see? And, again, very cool. 
sorry, getting a little glare on the camera here, but you can kind of see there. And again, with the saber being a little close, you can kind of see. I'm trying to hold different angles here so you can see the, the saber, but there you go. So it is light up. It is lit up. And, again, you know, it's light in here, so it's kind of hard to see. But, you know, not as good as the uh, the custom cathode sabers that I have and, you know, that are, that are made. So maybe an upgrade is in order at some point. But to be honest with you, I'm okay with it, you know, the way it is. I'm not really interested in having his saber lit up. And the, the on-off switch is hidden under his arm here, so you could just simply shut it off like that, see? And you, you could zipper this up, but I keep it unzippered so the switch is easy to get to, to turn the thing on and off at will, okay? And again, so let me put him back here. As far as Luke goes, let's bring him in. There's the better look at the head sculpt. I'm sorry if it's a little blurry. I've been using my web camera lately, and I'm still kind of learning how to use it. So, But I figure this way I won't be shaking the camera as much. And like I said, there's the blue. And again, this uh, the belt. Look at the belt. The belt's pretty nice. Pretty accurate. I mean, the outfit's great. Comes with the, uh, the helmet that he uses to train that he can't see. And the training Jedi ball there that was uh, Ben Kenobi was using to train him on the Millennium Falcon. That does make a brief appearance in Force Awakens, and just like just like Kylo Ren, um, there's a switch right here on his arm that you just simply go back or forward, and then the saber's off. See, so you know, I guess when the saber's off, that's when you really could tell the difference. That you know that you can kind of tell now that it's off. See, so you, you, it's more noticeable how much it was lit, you know, when you see it off. <laughs> So anyway, I will be back um, with a couple more things to show you, and then I think uh, this video is a wrap. Be right back. Okay, so these are the final two figures I'm going to show today, and of course, I would be amiss to not end the video showing these two very iconic characters, and of course, also appearing in The Force Awakens, so these characters are iconic and still relevant, and of course, I have to show Chewie, because let's face it, we're talking about the holiday special here, and he was uh, a big part of that. And so was Han Solo, right? So, let's see if that will smudge. I think there's a smudge on the, on the lens here. So I'll have to take care of that. All right, anyway. So, Hot Toys, Han Solo, and Chewie. Now, a lot of mixed feelings and reactions. Now, I did, I did futz with Chewbacca a little bit with the hair to kind of breed some life into it. Some people complain that the fur is a little off or that the hair on the face is dark. I also see pictures of the Force Awakens version that's coming that to me looks a lot better. But this is supposed to be the representation of him from the original. And it is still a great one at that. In fact, it has real fur. But as you see, I kind of mess with it a little bit to kind of give it a little more of the uh, kind of the personality, how his hair is kind of shaped around his face like where he's got a little bit of a curvature there above the eyes and not just like straight back so it is not 100% perfect and I think depending on lighting like if you look at it from that angle there you can see that the lighting it, it does it becomes more chewy at certain angles and then less like chewy from others so it definitely could be done a little better that's probably the only fault but the figure itself on a whole is great the bandolier the sack there, his bag there, his uh, crossbow, and the fur, it is real fur, and it's really, you could still pose him, the fur does not, you know, it's not fragile, doesn't come off, it's really well done, and of course there's Harrison Ford and Han Solo, and that is a, I guess, you know, with him being such a hard uh, personality to capture, that's as good as you're going to get, and it does represent him younger and looking more New Hope-ish. And, you know, some people complain about the sculpt and decide to replace it. But i got to be honest with you, I think it's great. And, you know what, compared to the Protos picks they were showing originally, I think they definitely improved it in the end and made it more, you know, Harrison Ford looking than what they originally showed in the Proto. And, uh, you know, the autofocus is kicking in. And I think it looks great. Um, you know, it does the job. And, of course, I have him in one of his cocky poses where he just kind of, like, got his hand up like, what, you know? You know, and the uh, the outfit, the boots, you know, the, the the belt and everything, the gun, all that looks pretty well done. 
you know, typical Hot Toys quality there. And uh, there's the gun in the holster. And it, it's great. The shirt's right. You know, the vest is nice. Screen accurate. Um, you know, I'll, I'll play with them. Maybe I'll repose them more in the, the shooting gun pose at some point. I don't know. But for me, this is Han Solo. This is A New Hope. And there's always room for improvement. You know, I think it could, you know, of course there's going to be critiquing and complaining. But I think for the most part they did a great job. And I think that they captured the age that he was at that point. And I think that... You know, though there's always room for improvement compared to what they originally showed when they were, you know, advertising the figures coming. I think they, they improved it greatly. Um, as you can see, Chewie is very tall. He's taller than a New Hope Vader. But, I mean, I got Vader kind of tilted back there a bit. But I think, you know, they did a good job with scale because he is tall. He is very big, Chewie, and I would imagine is taller than Vader in, in the movies. And as again, you can see, they match up all the uh, the stands like that Luke had, Vader has, and every other Hot and Boba Fett. Now, I do want to say again, you know, I have Obi Wan Kenobi from Hot Toys, and I do have Leia as well, and I have the Stormtroopers, but I don't have time to show them today. This video is going on way too long, and they're still in the box; they're not out like some of these. So I still have to get to them and kind of set them up. So I promise that I'll I'll show those another time, uh, maybe when I get the Rogue One Vader. Now, as promised, I want to ed end this video by giving a quick my quick review of Rogue One and what I actually felt. If you have not seen it yet and you are a Star Wars fan, you need to do yourself justice and you need to go out and see it. Um, I would say that as a standalone film, you know, it, it's very well done, but you can't really look at it as a standalone film. To me, and for what I grew up with, it almost plays off more like the Episode 3 I've always wanted to see versus Revenge of the Sith. Or we could consider it Episode 3.5. You know, they kind of say it's a Star Wars story, and they say it's a spin-off, but it really isn't. It's a companion piece to the original A New Hope Star Wars, and it's a it complements because it does give you a lot of insight on what happened in that era before A New Hope. Um, there are some familiar faces, there's new faces, and they don't shy away from making this film kind of stand out in the sense that you're, you're not going to get your typical formula. I mean, there's some things that are routine, obviously, that, that Star Wars films always have. Uh, you know, you have your beginning set up, you have your middle, you know, conflict, and then you have, like, the finale, the big fin action finale. So, I mean, it has those elements, but the style and the way it was shot is very different. Uh, in some aspect. The soundtrack, although not done by John Williams, I think the uh, Michael, I forgot his last name, but the, the person that did do the soundtrack, I think did very, uh, did, it, did it well, did it very well and did justice to it, because although you can hear different notes and different beats that maybe you're not used to, it, it still feels Star Wars-y, and it still feels like it fits in that universe. So I do think that, ultimately, I'm going to show, let me spin the camera around here real quick, you can see that I have... Um, my uh, Boba, speaking of Star Wars, I have my Boba Fett shirt on here in honor of really cool t-shirts I picked up on Amazon. The whole front is basically Boba Fett's helmet. So, woohoo, Merry Christmas! <laughs> so, anyway, Rogue One is a must-see. It's great to see it on the big screen. If you can see an IMAX, that's great. I didn't see it on IMAX, but I saw it on, a, on AMC, a really big screen in 3D. And it was awesome. And, like, you get very sentimental for older fans like me that, you know, are, are remember the original films or are old enough to have seen them in the theaters or just grow up with them in general. Um, you really get a sense of nostalgia. And as the film goes on, you start to really see how it's connecting. And you're like, wow, you know, this is a true prequel. This is a prequel to A New Hope. You know, episodes one through three were prequels to Star Wars in general. This is a New Hope prequel. This is like something you want to just watch, and then right after that, go right into A New Hope, and it works. Um, I don't want to give away any spoilers in case people haven't seen it yet when they're watching this vid, so I'm going to keep it very general. But I will say that it is grittier, it is darker, it's not so much as much of a fun family film as it normally is, although the family could still enjoy it. I saw it with my son, who's 11, going on 12, and he enjoyed it, and he liked it better than Force Awakens, as far as he told me. Now, whether it's better than Force Awakens, I think is, is up for debate. I think the movies both work in their own way. I think Episode 7 is, is definitely more fun and popcorn-y and fits into the whole Skywalker saga, you know, where this is more probably adults will probably, that, that are old-time fans, will probably enjoy it more because of all the callbacks and 
you're seeing familiar vehicles, f familiar uh, TIE fighters, X-Wings, costumes and outfits that you saw back in the original New Hope. And, you know, some there's just like a lot of things there that I think ap will appease and appeal to the older fan. Kids will enjoy it, but if they, they're not going to have – the kids might think, wow, this is cool, and they're going to look at it as something new and great. But from a nostalgia standpoint, it's going to be the older fans that kind of really get it, you know, and understand why – certain things are working in this film. <laughs> and, and it's not a perfect film. It has its flaws. I wouldn't give it a perfect 10, but I would definitely give it a solid 7.5 or 8, I would say. And, you know, for fans of the old movies and fans of the old character and, you know, fans of Vader, you're in for a treat seeing this film. And you, you'd be denying yourself if you didn't go to the theater to see it. Um, you know, this holiday coming up with Christmas and maybe people having some time off for whatever they're celebrating... Uh, it's probably a great time to go see it if you if you want to see it. And I would say see it in 3D if you can. It's not necessary, but it's cool. And why not? Because if you you know if you don't have a 3D television at home, you know why not see it in a way that you might not see it again. You know once it's out on Blu-ray and all that good stuff. <laughs> um, and it's and like I said, it's it's worth the price of admission to me. And I think that you know when all is said and done and you walk out of there. You're not going to you're not going to look at it again. You're not going to look at it as a standalone. You know, it is an offshoot a bit, but it, it really does tie into the whole story arc very well, especially to the original trilogy. Um, and you're going to see some old faces and some that were actually computer generated, but actually kind of work. Some scenes maybe more than others. Uh, some scenes the you know the characters look a little video gameish, uh, but. Overall, it was a well-done job, and it was nice to see certain cameos in there that wouldn't be possible at this point. If I'm, I'm trying to keep it as spoiler-free as I can. So really go and have a good time with it. And for the old fans, you're, you're in for a treat, I think. And I think I accept it. I accept it into the, the existence of the movies. It doesn't have to be better than Empire or better than Force Awakens. I like it better than Force Awakens, even though I love Force Awakens. Yes, Force Awakens was, has been accused of being a big rehash of A New Hope, and I get that. But I also think it's meant to mirror A New Hope to kind of kick off a new trilogy. So I kind of forgive that point. But I think Rogue One offers something a little more original, but yet at the same time complements what came before. And again, appeals to the older fan. And I, I, I kind of appreciate Rogue One more for what it is because of my age and what I grew up with. You know, So it was great to see some familiar... Uh, good guys and villains on screen again that uh, I remember seeing when I was a kid. So with that being said, Rogue One gets a huge thumbs up, and uh, I look forward to adding it into the uh, stream of existing movies and, and you know adding it to the, as an, a welcome addition into the Star Wars world. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been my Star Wars special. I will be back with showing more of the other figures that I promised to show you. Uh, Obi-Wan, Princess Leia I have. The two-pack of Stormtroopers. And I even have, for Kylo Ren, I have one of the new Stormtrooper figures from Hot Toys as well. So I will show that all that next time, maybe when the Rogue One Vader comes. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make that, excuse me, I'll make that a standalone spin-off story or a sequel to this video. <laughs> so next time, happy holiday, guys. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. You know, whatever you're celebrating this week, you know, I hope you have a great one. And, uh... A great new year, and uh, see you next time. Jobis34, peace out.